Dear Twitter, Today I was forced to go to my high school football game with the family to see my older brother play. It was pretty boring and dumb. I brought my Switch, but it was too loud and bright that it was impossible to enjoy it. Hashtag FML. I've been tweeting about my everyday life for the past three years. Unfortunately, even through Twitter, no one seems to care about me. <laughs> Isn't that sad? It's like no matter how much I scream on this platform, my voice gets drowned out by countless others who have more followers than I do. I'm just thankful for the 176 followers I currently have, even though they don't seem to like my posts or interact with them. At least I can say they cared enough to follow my pointless life. Unlike my so-called friends, or I guess I should say lack of friends, I don't really have any. I guess it doesn't help that I'm a hardcore introvert. But that's just how I am. I never really like socializing with a bunch of people and because of that, everyone thinks I'm weird. Why does it have to be this way? Why can't I just be myself and have friends who care about me? But you know what? Recently, there's been this one person in the past few weeks who's been retweeting some of my posts. I've noticed that it's the ones I express my frustration towards the people that I hate or wish were gone. Kinda weird, but I'm sure they must know the same feeling. I kinda want to reach out to them, but like I said, <sighs> I'm an introvert and reaching out to people isn't really my kind of thing, to be honest. But after three days since the last retweet from this person, I received a DM notification. I wasn't sure who it was, but it got me all excited. I didn't really want to open it until I got home from school, but because of this, it was the only thing in my mind all day. At the very least, it was the only thing motivating me to keep going through the day without a fuss. And then when the time finally came, I lay down onto my bed face down and took out my phone. I slowly opened up Twitter and clicked the inbox button. I saw the username and it was the same user who keeps retweeting my tweets. I guess they want to talk to me. And that's great, this could be the only chance I get to actually make friends. My anxiety started to act up, and I was getting worried that I might say the wrong thing, so I carefully took my time to form my first message to this person. The message that they sent me was your typical greetings that you would get. It was only appropriate to respond with the same casual tone. I don't want them to notice how excited I was to be talking to someone. Otherwise, that would be kinda embarrassing. I quickly noticed a reply from them. It read that they felt the same about their situation, and that they hate everyone around them. They mentioned that their life has been hell since they always get bullied and hates being around people. They explained that they really resonate with what I tweet, and wanted to reach out to show their support. I replied with a thankful message and told them it really means a lot. After what felt like hours talking about how much we despise school and the people who attend it, we felt comfortable enough to reveal who we were. Apparently, this person was a girl who was about two years older than me, so that would make her a senior in high school. To my surprise, she lived in the next state over. I didn't read too much into it, but I did find it pretty funny. She could have been in another country for all I've known, but it turned out she lives close by. Next thing I knew, it was already nearing midnight. So we told our goodbyes and postponed the conversation for the next day. A few days go by and we just talk and talk and talk about all sorts of things. It was honestly really refreshing to be exchanging words with another human being that aren't relatives or teachers. My mood started to improve over the few days we talked and I found myself looking forward to every single message she sends me. It would be the only highlight of my day. But the next day, she stopped. I was puzzled. Did I say something offensive? Does she have other things going on? I wasn't sure but I started to get worried. I started spamming her with messages asking if she was okay. But no luck. It was as though I was screaming into a dark void of nothingness with no sight of life. I started to feel a bit depressed. As though I lost a very close friend of mine, never to be seen again. The next day, she finally replied with an apology. She explained that she was busy with a project of hers and she didn't really have time to talk. I honestly was just glad that she was okay and that she didn't just ghost me. 
Being overjoyed, I told her about how worried I was that I was starting to get depressed because she didn't reply. She reassured me that it was not her intent to make me feel that way. But I understand. Sometimes we get busy, so it happens. Out of the blue, she brought up a conversation relating to her peers at school and the people in her life. She went on a rant about how she despised everyone in hypothetical scenarios where she would just get rid of them all one by one without getting caught. I was kind of freaked out. I mean, I sometimes wish the same, but not to that extreme. It reached to the point where it felt like she would actually do it. I wasn't sure if she was kidding or not, considering she keeps putting LOL at the end of her messages. That means she's kidding, right? Right? Or am I just delusional? I started to bring up my concerns and told her if only we could do that. She then replied with, I'm sure we could get away with it if we were careful. I almost choked on my own saliva. I was in disbelief. There's no way she was serious. But just in case. I replied with a message about how I wouldn't actually do that in that everything I said about wishing some people gone was just me venting my frustration. She only replied with a serious message saying, but you can, I'll help you. At that point, I knew that was a big red flag. As much as I hate to ghost this person or even block them, I don't want to get involved into a situation like that. Sure, I hate people, but to actually commit a crime to get rid of them? I could never do that. Next thing I knew, I found myself not replying to that message and leaving it at that. Over the next few days, she would constantly annoy me with messages to the point where I just blocked her from my Twitter. After that, the messages stopped and it was back to my lonesome self again. At least I wouldn't get dragged into something crazy. It's been three weeks since I blocked her on Twitter. Since then, I haven't really gotten any new followers or people retweeting. She was the only person who cared enough to do that stuff. I felt lonely, and I had the temptation of messaging her again, but I kept reminding myself that she is crazy. Suddenly, during the whole inner dispute going on in my head, I received a DM from a different user. This time it didn't have a profile picture. I wonder what they want. I opened up the message only to find that it was the same girl who I blocked. The message she sent me felt like a confession in a way. A creepy confession. She claimed that I was suppressing my true feelings, and she knew that the real me would join her in disposing of the body she had laying in her closet. She kept going on about how we would happily hold hands while skinning our enemies alive. I honestly felt like vomiting. What the hell have I gotten myself into? Why can't she just take a hint and leave me alone? She then sent another message saying that she'll help me take care of the past bothering me. I replied with concern as to what she meant. But she hasn't replied. Was she kidding? This has to be some kind of joke, right? What is going on? That night, it started to rain down heavily with a faint sound of thunder in the background. Suddenly, I heard a small tap outside of my room window. I couldn't tell what it was since the lights were off, and it was past midnight. It could be a tree smacking my window or something, but I guess I'll see. I got out of bed and opened up the curtains. Oh god, it was the girl covered in blood. She appeared to be panting with her phone facing towards my direction. This girl had Twitter up, and as I took a glance at the profile, it was her. After realizing that, I quickly closed the curtains and yelled. The tapping kept going on, and she started to repeat the phrase. We both belong together. <laughs>